Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Yeah. Present in the case of 64-year-old male, known case of chronic kidney disease, stage 5, on hemodialysis, thrice weekly, has come to ER with complaints of generalized muscle tiredness and lethargy since one day. On initial 10-second assessment, the airway was, airway was patent and there was no pooling of secretions. Uh, breathing, uh, the air entry was bilaterally equal and there was presence of uh, basal crepitations on auscultation. The respiratory rate was 22 per minute and the saturation was 97% in room air. Uh, Coming to circulation, the BP was uh, 160 bar 90 millimeters of mercury and the pulse rate was 51 per minute. And uh, we had uh, already uh, arranged an IV access, it was secured with an 80 gauge gallon and the cardiac monitor was attached. And the dis uh, disability, uh, the GCS was E4, V5, M6, and with pupils were uh, bilaterally equal and reactive to light. And the patient was moving all four limbs, and, G and GR e exposure, the temperature is 98.6 degree Fahrenheit, and GR base is 182 minute. And uh, on the cardiac monitor, uh, it showed there was a presence of uh, long PR interval, and there was a uh, presence of tall TVS. So, uh, that time we took a 12 lead ECG and it showed a uh, long PR interval uh, with wide QRS duration along with tall T wave. And uh, we, we took a VBG. So, in VBG, the, it was, there was presence of uh, uh, metabolic acidosis. The pH was uh, 7.201 and bicarb was 17.4 and potassium was uh, 8.1 with uh, creatinine of 7.1, uh, lactate was 2.6 and PCO2 was 32. And uh, uh, the potassium was 8.1, uh, so we gave uh, injection 10% uh, calcium gluconate, mm -hmm. uh, 10 ml over 10 okay, minutes. Before going into the interventions, can you summarize once more? Like, so here we have a CKD Six, patient yes, who is on maintenance dialysis. Yes, so one information which probably I would like to know is when was the last, last dialysis done? Last dialysis done uh, two days back. Okay, uh, so no dialysis was skipped, yes, right? Yes, sir. So he had uh, his due dialysis. Yes. Now coming with uh, generalized symptoms of fatigue. Tiredness, that's all, no? Yes, sir. And any other associated symptoms was there? Any uh, vomiting or any no, other issues? No, nothing. No, no, so, so yes. thus he presented to the ER and on examination you felt that there was uh, some basal crepes. Yes, sir. Right? Otherwise, vitals were uh, no, uh, normal, BP yeah. was fine, yeah. right? BP was fine. There was B pressure bradycardia. Yeah. On monitoring, you felt, I mean, a cardiac monitor showed uh, query bradycardia and you have taken <coughs> an ECG, which was feature suggestive of probable hyperkalemia, right? That's yes. a summary. Yes. Okay. Sir. Fine. Uh, so, uh, then uh, we had uh, given uh, medications uh, mm -hmm. uh, according to it, 10% uh, calcium gluconate mm -hmm. and we had given a GI bolus with uh, mm -hmm. insulin, given actrapid 80 units and 25% dextrose, mm -hmm. 100 ml and we had also given nebulization of salbutamol mm -hmm. uh, of 3 cycles. Right. And moving on to the sample history, okay. uh, 76 year old male, non case of uh, chronic kidney disease stage 5 on thrice weekly hemodialysis, uh, hemodialysis. Mm -hmm. last hemodialysis was 2 days back, mm -hmm. uh, type 2 diabetes mellitus, hypertension mm -hmm. and compla has complaints of uh, generalized tiredness and lethargy okay. since one day and it was uh, gradually in onset and it was progressive in nature. Yeah. And there is no history of any uh, chest pain palpitations or dyspnea on exertion, okay. uh, headache, uh, vomiting or uh, seizures or any altered sensor, altered behavior or sensor. Right. Uh, moving on to allergic history, uh, the patient is not allergic to any medications. Uh, medication history, uh, the patient is taking uh, tab metformin 500 milligram mm -hmm. uh, uh, twice daily and is taking uh, tab uh, silica uh, mm -hmm. 10 mg mm -hmm. BD. And the past history, the patient has a uh, history of uh, Chronic kidney disease stage five, type two diabetes mellitus, and hypertension. Mm -hmm. um, the last the last meal was taken uh, four hours back, and he has been on dialysis for the last five years. Uh, diet, dietary history: uh, his uh, staple diet is um, rice, rice, and he's uh, taking chapatis, and he has uh, he has a habit of eating bananas. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is no history of any uh, trauma or any pain in the lower limbs. On uh, examination, uh, the, the patient was conscious or oriented. Uh, there was presence of uh, pallor and okay. there was a bilateral uh, pedal, pitting, pedal edema. Uh -huh. And uh, there was uh, no, no ictus or sinuses uh, clubbing or lymphadenopathy. Uh -huh. On uh, systemic examination, uh, on uh, respiratory system, uh, the chest, the bilateral basal cups was present. Okay. And uh, in CNS, uh, GCS was uh, E4, V5, M6 and uh, Power was, uh, power was 5 by 5 in all four limbs. On mm -hmm. per abdominal examination, uh, there's uh, abdominal, uh, dis abdominal distension 
and but per abdomen it was soft and non tender. Mm -hmm. uh, so we took the uh, lab values also. Okay. Uh, so in lab values, the hemoglobin was uh, 8.1, mm -hmm. and uh, so the creatinine uh, showed 7.1, and uh, potassium was uh, 7.2. Okay. So here. Now, definitely there is no ambiguity in the diagnosis part, right? We have a yes. patient who was a known case of CKD, now presenting with uh, lab evidence showing suggesting of hyperkalemia. Yes. So what are the other issues which you need to be aware of in a patient coming like this? What are the other complications which you should be looking forward for a patient who is on CKD? Others can also contribute, it's not just yes. uh, So we must look about uh, whether he is in any, uh, like uremia, presence okay. of uremia, whether he is in any encephalopathy or okay. associated symptoms. Okay. Uh, we must look, uh, look about pulmonary hmm. edema. Okay. Uh, about whether he is, he is having any breathing difficulty, dyspnea, okay. uh, and uh, associated uh, features, presence of chest Good. pain, pericarditis, okay. and uh, in, uh, other electrolyte other electrolyte disturbances. Okay. Yes, yes. Any other infections, things like yes, that. Okay. Yes. And what could what are the other specific histories you are going to ask when you are finding hyperkalemia? Uh, so we can ask, ask about the dialysis, the history of okay. dialysis. And the efficacy of plus dialysis, yes, timing of plus dialysis. Drug, drug history. Exactly. Yeah. So, so any new NSAIDs, yeah, any new yeah. agents which can increase the uh, potassium, yes, yes, yes. any blood transfusions recently. Yes, yes. And of, of course, in any patient, you have to roll out pseudo hyperkalemia also. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Was there a, uh, I mean, a processing error of the sample? Yes. Things like that you should never miss. So, for any any time, you, especially in a blood gas, you see a hyperkalemia, always uh, think about pseudo hyperkalemia also. Yes, okay? yes. So, now let us assume that this patient has a true hyperkalemia. Uh, and we know that he is a CKD patient. Mm -hmm. Will you be like worried more about a hyperkalemia in a uh, acute kidney injury or in a CK, uh, CKD patient? Uh, what is more so worries more, more acute, acute presentation. So most of the CKD patients, even when you find potassium of eight and all, may not arrest in front of you. They will give you time to manage. Unless a patient with a value of six, with a normal creatinine 24 hours back, uh, is gonna probably sink in front of you. So always, it's not that's the numeric value of the potassium. It is the background of the patient. Okay, mm -hmm. so we have seen potassiums as high as eight, nine, and dot. Uh, mm -hmm. Patient otherwise uh, doing okay. Another two hours, we will get lavishly to manage the patient. Okay, so mm -hmm. here we have a CKD patient with hyperkalemia, yes. right? So the diagnosis diagnosis at this point is established, mm -hmm. and hemodynamics looks otherwise fine. Mm -hmm. You felt that there is some component of pulmonary. Mass. So yes. definitely at that moment itself, you have to initiate the process of yes. HT. Yes, okay, he is due for his HT most yes, likely. Sir. So yes, we have to manage the acute part, but. In the in the background, make sure that the processes for the insertion or the next session of dialysis is started. Yes. Then you proceed with your emergency management. So, what are the options left for us here? You correctly uh, told you yeah. gave. Uh, so, we are giving injection calcium glucose. Okay. What does calcium glucose do? Uh, so, calcium glucose is a membrane stabilizing agent okay. of the cardiac membrane. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, so that the presence of action, action of potassium onto the cardiac membrane is uh, doesn't happen. So Fair it's enough. Not a, Fair enough. Uh, when all do you give calcium glucose? In all hyperkalemias, will you give calcium glucose or? Uh, so in you, case of uh, digoxin toxicity. No, that that theory is also debunked now. We'll uh, come to that. Yes. Uh, okay. Yes. So the absolute thing will be an ECG, ECG change. Yes. Will be one of the things. But again, any value more than six point four is kind of a reasonable indication to give. Hype, uh, I mean. Calcium glucose. Yes. Okay. So, definitive ECG changes suggestive of hyperkalemia. Yes, you are going to give. As you told, you gave the first dose of calcium glucose. How did you give? You gave 10 ml of calcium glucose, 10 percentage yes. over 10 minutes. is a standard thing which we usually say. Yes, sir. Uh, is there any other drug which is recommended other than calcium glucose along with like calcium, etc.? Calcium chloride. So, the other drug is calcium chloride, chloride, which we don't have in our part of the world. But Theoretically, it has three times the elemental calcium as compared to your calcium gluconate. gluconate. So, it is more potent technically than your calcium gluconate. But the problem is that it has significant uh, venous irritability. So, any small extra visitation, you are going to lead with problems. Mm -hmm. So, calcium gluconate, multiple doses if you are needing, ideally it is recommended to give in a central line. But with the calcium gluconate, you are always safe to give in a peripheral line. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, Or as an IV push. Yes. Okay. So, that is with calcium gluconate and calcium chloride. Now, First, you saw the value of uh, uh, how much for this patient? Uh, so, uh, the lab value is 9.1. No, no, no. Uh, we don't have the lab value at that point. We have no, only the ABG value. The ABG was 8.1. 8.1. You see the EC changes. You gave the first dose of calcium gluconate. Yes. Now, when are you planning to give or reassess for the next dose of calcium gluconate? Uh, so, after one, one hour. Usually, 
this is something which is we are expecting to act fast and yeah. last for a shorter so duration of time right yes, so 5 to 10 min minutes will be the right, right time to go for the next calcium glucose mm -hmm. dose yes. okay so first dose you gave you have to ideally mount up the ecg changes if it re uh, reverses completely then well and good there 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 is going to be two possibilities one it is going to remain same 5 okay. to 10 minutes you can repeat the second dose it goes remains i mean goes back can come again that again will be an indication give to the second or the third dose of calcium gluconate okay yes. very rarely we go for a calcium gluconate infusion also okay but most most of the times it will be two or three doses of calcium gluconate you will get some time to mobilize with other things so first dose we gave 5 to 10 minutes you are going to repeat the ecg changes remain same second dose of calcium gluconate again 5 to 10 minutes you are going to give the third dose of calcium gluconate and you repeat the doses as needed refractory yes getting things done you can start on an infusion mm. of calcium gluconate also yes okay is there any drug which is incompatible with calcium gluconate which we use for management of hyperkalemia <coughs> bicarbonate okay. never give calcium gluconate along with bicarbonate okay. in the same line yes sir. okay fine yes, so uh, that is with calcium gluconate now yes, second sir. line uh, so we are you know uh, ga bolus of insulin okay, what is ga bolus uh, so in, in insulin 8 units uh, mm. uh, in <laughs> units plus uh, 25% dextrose 100 ml okay any anybody want to uh, build on that answer refine that answer a bit more which part of the glucose and insulin is are we concerned about what is the drug which is going to reduce the insulin insulin insulin, insulin. insulin sir. so it is not that always you have to give the yeah, yeah, glucose yeah, if yeah. the sugar is about 250 you are justified in giving only the insulin also okay yes. if the sugar is less i mean we are giving glucose for preventing hypoglycemia yeah, right it is yeah, not right. that your uh, uh, glucose is going to kind of uh, help much with the hyperkalemia yes. but yes there is an in mechanism of giving uh, glucose that can endo endogenous insulin production can be increased and all but that is more of theory so all practical purpose it is our insulin which is going to help and it is the glucose to prevent the hypoglycemia yes. okay yes. so to about 250 probably you can give only insulin your sugar is less than 250 you are giving a what is traditionally called as a ga bolus which is 8 to 10 units of uh, short acting insulin human actrapid along with your <laughs> Dextrose. Dextrose. Very important. Dextrose usually give. The other thing will be if you have a CKD patient again with insulin, you are going. You need to monitor mm. your glucose mm. after giving a GA bolus mm. or yes. insulin. Yes. That is again one mistake which we usually commit. <laughs> That is to follow up values. Potassium repeat every two hours. Glucose monitor monitoring for until six hours of giving the dose of insulin. Yes. because that is the time in which you are going to expect for the hypoglycemia so if the patient goes into hypoglycemia definitely at the other end usually we give the insulin and start the patient on a 10 percentage dextrose infusion okay yes, yes. so that is with your ga bolus as we give here we combine it and give no we yes, give, take the glucose add insulin to it and then give it as a bolus fair enough two third yeah. uh, so we'll give anabolization salbutamol okay uh, uh, is so there a difference in dose of salbutamol in asthma and yes so it was 3 to 4 times increase uh, here uh, we are giving almost 10 to 10, 10 ml 10 mm. ml uh, not usually in uh, case of asthma 2.5 2.5 yeah mm. good then uh, so then uh, we uh, can give uh, okay. potassium so binding these, th uh, these three are the mm. most acute kind of things which we usually follow is there one more drug which can you can probably try in a subgroup of patient acutely that is diuretics yes right not in all patients okay yes. a patient who is oliguric not in volume overload and all there is no point in giving prosamine in a subgroup of patients who is uh, you feel that the patient is already loaded uh, has a reasonable uh, expectation of output those kind of subgroup of patients you can try a loop diuretic mm. prosamide 40 mg might be a good option in those kind of patients yes. okay mm. fine then uh, so you can give a potassium binding uh, okay resins yeah. resins uh, so uh, we can give uh, sodium zirconate okay uh, sodium polystyrene sulfate was used earlier okay. Okay. they are not using gastric issues. again any uh, contraindication or any subgroup of patients you are going to be cautious of giving a k bind mm -hmm. any patient with mm -hmm. bowel issues bowel issue. okay so any patient with ileus constipation any acute bowel issues colitis those subgroup of patients better to avoid mm -hmm. okay yes, okay so that was the fifth one then two more agents mm -hmm. we just touched upon no bicarb yes, what's the role of bicarb in hyperkalemia uh, renal uh, what's the subgroup of patients again we might consider an early bicarb uh, acidosis so patient with, with hyperkalemia with acidosis probably early in the 
treatment phase itself, we will give uh, uh, bicarbonate. Okay. A strong indication to give IBK will be metabolic acidosis with hyperkalemia. Okay, then. Last, definitive treatment. <coughs> so, hemodialysis, hemodialysis. Okay. So, here it is more of like the patient mm. is already on dialysis, we just yeah. need to get him on. But otherwise also any acute, acute kidney injury with refractory hyperkalemia itself is an indication for dialysis. insertion of dialysis. dialysis. Okay, anything else? And other things will be avoiding uh, nephrotoxic agents, uh, other agents which is going to increase your potassium. Yes. Transfusions you need to be very cautious of during the acute hyperkalemic phase. Okay. Yes, then, uh, then you should else? Try, uh, try to avoid also many drugs like AC inhibitors or okay. ARBs. Yes. Anybody else want to add anything? Oh, then what happened to this patient? Mm, uh, so this patient has, uh, he was admitted under uh, uh, nephrology. Okay. Uh, okay. Dialysis was done okay. and he was admitted under uh, nephrology for further management. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Sir.